Hi, Hippoi here. Welcome to Hippoi's Biotech Breakdown. In this episode, I'll cover how our immune system is always working to protect us and highlight some of the cool new ways that scientists are using our immune system to treat cancer. So, what's so special about our immune system? How does our immune system work? What are these cool new treatments? Well, let's start by answering the first question. What is so special about our immune system? Every one of us has an immune system that is constantly working to protect us from germs, foreign substances, and mutated cells. In fact, our immune systems are constantly working to prevent mutated, cancerous cells from multiplying uncontrollably and becoming cancer. Sounds complicated, but we don't even have to think about it. Our body just does this on its own. And usually, it does a pretty good job. But as we know, sometimes things can get past our immune system. So, how does our immune system work? Yeah, this one's a little more complicated to answer. Let's start with the basics. Our immune system can be thought of as two main parts, adaptive and innate immunity. These two parts work closely together on different tasks to protect us from getting sick. So, what is innate immunity? Our innate immune system is our first line of defense against germs entering our bodies. It can be thought of as a wall or a security force that's made up of skin, cells, mucous membranes, and proteins, and together they act in a general fashion to prevent foreign substances from causing us harm. Usually they do a pretty good job, but as we know, sometimes our immune system can fail and things can get by causing us to get sick. Well, this is where our adaptive immune system would come in. So, how does our adaptive immune system work? Well, to explain, I'll provide one example. When the germ gets past our innate immune system, our adaptive immune system first identifies this germ. And once identified, the adaptive immune system plans its response and then mounts it, essentially fighting off this germ. But what's really interesting is that our adaptive immune system actually can memorize these germs, meaning that this process of identifying, planning, and responding can be quickened. So the next time our immune system encounters this substance, our adaptive immune system can mount a quicker response. Sorry, quick interruption. If you like an episode of Hippoids Biotech Breakdown covering viruses and our immune system, please leave a comment down below. And if you're enjoying this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Our adaptive immune system consists of T cells, B cells, and antibodies. Natural killer cells and gamma delta T cells also play a role in our adaptive immune system, but they also play a part in our innate immune system as well. I know, another list, but T, B, N, K, and gamma delta T cells are all lymphocytes, which are essentially types of white blood cells. NK cells go through our body and detect general signs of immune stress, such as inflammation, whereas T cells and B cells go through our body with their specialized receptors and detect foreign substances. I know, I left off gamma delta T, but we'll get back to that shortly. So, what do T cells do? T cells have three main jobs. These jobs include messaging, detection and attack, and memorization. Helper T cells are responsible for messaging, in which they send chemical signals to other immune cells and start the adaptive immune response. Cytotoxic T cells are responsible for detecting and attacking foreign substances and mutated cancerous cells. Eventually, some helper T cells go on and become memory T cells, in which they memorize a foreign substance or germ to prepare the body for the next time it encounters it. Now that we've covered T cells, what do B cells do? B cells activate one of two ways. They either activate dependently or independently of T cells, 
in T cell dependent activation, B cells encounter a helper T cell, which sends them a message to activate, and they activate. In T cell independent activation, B cells receive a danger signal when they encounter a foreign substance and activate. Once activated, B cells do one of two things. They either become an effector B cell that produces antibodies, which tag foreign substances and warn the body to attack the substance, or they become memory B cells, which remember a foreign substance to shorten the immune response. Let's come back full circle to gamma delta T. Gamma delta T is an interesting immune cell that offers both innate and adaptive characteristics. And what's really interesting, gamma delta T makes up a very small proportion of our total T cells, somewhere in the realm of one to 5%. Gamma delta T can also be activated either directly or indirectly of a foreign substance. In direct activation, gamma delta T encounters this foreign substance, notices it, and then attacks. In indirect activation, gamma delta T is informed by another immune cell to attack. Let's get to cellular immunotherapy. What is cellular immunotherapy? All right, before we make the jump into cellular immunotherapy, it's important to understand immunotherapy. In terms of cancer treatment, immunotherapy, also known as immuno-oncology, is a line of treatment that uses our immune system to prevent, control, or eliminate cancer. While there are many treatments in this area, some of the most promising include adoptive cell therapy, targeted antibodies, immunomodulators, cancer vaccines, and oncolytic virus therapy. Adoptive cell therapy, also known as cellular immunotherapy, reactivates, enhances, and expands the naturally occurring cancer-fighting immune cells before reintroducing them into a patient. Targeted antibodies are essentially antibodies that can disrupt cancer activity and alert the body's immune system to attack the cancer. Immunomodulators essentially manipulate the gas pedal and brakes of the immune system to treat cancer. Cancer vaccines can either prevent cancer or stimulate the body's immune system to fight off a tumor. Oncolytic virus therapy is essentially a modified virus that can infect and destroy a tumor, essentially to fight off cancer. While every single one of these areas seem promising, I'll cover cellular immunotherapy as it takes our naturally occurring cancer-fighting immune cells and enhances them to treat cancer. So, what kind of cell therapies are there? Well, in this episode, I plan to cover five. TIL therapy, engineered TCR therapy, CAR-T therapy, NK cell therapy, and gamma delta T cell therapy. TIL, also known as tumor infiltrating lymphocyte therapy, takes the naturally occurring T cells that have infiltrated a patient's tumor and enhances and expands them. This essentially means that they take these cells, supercharge their abilities, and multiply their total number before giving them back to the patient. Once in the patient, these cells actively seek out tumors and destroy them with their supercharged abilities. Some of the advantages of TIL are, it's an additional line of treatment when all other options have been exhausted. It may offer complete and lasting control of cancer, and it's a one-time treatment. Some disadvantages, TIL can be expensive and time-consuming to produce, and it can require long hospital stays, up to a few weeks. Also, the approval process for TIL can be challenging as it's thought of as a last resort tumor treatment. PCR, also known as engineered T-cell receptor therapy, takes a patient's naturally occurring T-cells and enhances them by inserting a T-cell receptor, which allows them to target specific markers on cancer. When compared to CAR-T, engineered TCR therapy is more versatile and can treat more cancers. Some of the disadvantages of engineered TCR therapy include the cost of cell separation, the difficulty of creating this treatment, and the side effects, which can be similar to CAR-T. CAR-T, also known as chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, 
is actually quite similar to engineered TCR therapy. In fact, it's actually a type of engineered TCR therapy. But the only difference is that CAR T uses a synthetic CAR receptor rather than another type of T cell receptor. CAR T's advantage over engineered TCR therapy is that CAR T's receptors can actually bind to cancers without markers on their surface. And this can make more cancers vulnerable to this treatment. But at the end of the day, this doesn't treat as many cancers as engineered TCR therapy. And some other downsides include this is costly and time consuming to make CAR T. NK or natural killer cell therapy uses NK cells to treat cancer. This treatment is not targeted like CAR T or TCR therapy. To create these treatments, scientists isolate NK cells and enhance their anti-cancer ability while making them a little longer lived. Interestingly enough, some scientists have even found a way to insert the CAR T receptor into the NK cell. Some advantages include there's no need to genetically engineer NK cells to recognize cancer. This could be a quicker treatment to produce and there's limited side effects. Gamma Delta T is part of the new wave of cellular immunotherapy with the potential of treating cancer with stronger responses and fewer side effects. Gamma Delta T is actually part of both the innate and adaptive immune system, and it's already pre-programmed to find and destroy cancer. This is unique to Gamma Delta T and not something found in any other T cell. Benefits include only targeting cancerous cells, no donor compatibility, and the potential for an off-the-shelf treatment. What is so special about cellular immunotherapy? Cellular immunotherapy is a way to treat patients with the cells that already exist in their immune system. These cells can differentiate between healthy and cancerous cells, and they're ready to combat cancer long after that initial dose. These cells offer strong responses and an option for patients who have already exhausted all other treatments. While there are many benefits to adoptive cell therapy, it's important to be aware of the side effects. Some of the most severe side effects include cytokine release syndrome, neurological problems, and other severe side effects. While there have been many advancements in adoptive cell therapy, the mechanism for treatment always relies on our immune response. While these treatments may seem complex, at the end of the day, they're just supercharged cells that came from our immune system. It's important to note that this is not a recommendation for a specific treatment but rather an informational overview of how our immune system works and some cool treatments in oncology. If you'd like more information on this subject, please check out the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.